Hello and welcome to Lyranar. In this video we're going to attempt to answer a very important question and that is what does cancer have in common with the coronavirus? And um, we're going to answer this question by looking at the most recent scientific research in that domain and by finding those answers we're going to be able to develop a strategy, a therapy strategy for cancer and viruses such as the coronavirus that really works. But before we do all that, a short reminder, take advantage of our current sales actions at laranara.com and get some of the most powerful holistic health devices at amazing prices for a limited time only. Link in the description box below for you. Also, if you enjoy this type of content where we talk about holistic health solutions, please support our work by liking, sharing and subscribing. Also, hit the notifications button so you don't miss out on the weekly health content that appears here. And with that out of the way, let's dive right in and learn more about what cancer has in common with the coronavirus and what we can do about it. And if you are a regular viewer of our channel, you know this graph already that shows you very well how you get sick and by understanding this you can also gain a better understanding of how you can heal yourself and prevent illness from happening of course. First and foremost you must know that you as a layman should distance yourself from the one-dimensional thinking that a cancer or Lyme borreliosis or the coronavirus that those conditions simply erupt in the body and the defense mechanism collapses instantly. This is not the case. It's a whole cascade that develops slowly over time and that in the end leads to those results. All these diseases are systemic conditions and their development history is made up of many layers of uh, maldevelopments and the beginning remains often unnoticed somewhere in the past. Therefore, as long as we do not know the disease history for a specific patient and we have not processed and resolved the impact of the biological stress event, we cannot start giving a correct treatment. And even the goal of eventually conquering the illness by immunological means remains vague as long as the symptom history and the real causes of the condition are not understood. And that's why in this video, by looking at the most recent scientific research, we're going to try to get a better understanding of viruses and cancer. And by gaining this understanding, we will be able to develop, as you will see, a holistic healing concept. And here, the graph again. So we have epigenetic factors and environmental triggers um, and also psycho-emotional shocking events. And all of these triggers, they cause stress and toxic emotions, which affects our limbic system. We can also see this in brain edemas. If the stress condition persists, this affects negatively our autonomous nervous system. We have dysregulation and eventually a shutdown of the immune system. And uh, this in turn affects our hormonal system. We have a dysregulation there as well that goes hand in hand with an adrenaline depletion and a cortisol excess. We also see um, cellu uh, cellular depolarization uh, from a switch to fermentation. We see tissue acidity and symptoms. We have energy blockages, of course, and once uh, we resolve the conflicts and we find uh, the right approach to uh, treating the condition, we see cell repolarization uh, and the whole system normalizes itself slowly. The problem we also have with uh, this um, hysteria about the coronavirus is that this causes additional problems so panic and fear about your own existence, biological conflicts which affect your lungs and your respiratory airways and finally the kidneys. In general we create, we see the people with the masks and hear the frightening news and the exacerbation in the media 
and this causes additional stress that additionally dysregulates us and brings about it uh, with it even more problems because the stress causes adrenaline depletion and a cellular depolarization and uh, the cellular depolarization causes cellular membrane hardening and impacts the cellular nutrition so the cells degenerate and it also affects negatively the cellular excretion so you create toxicity within your body and as we will see from the uh, most recent research that I'm going to present to you this is definitely the case for both viruses and cancer Let's have a look then at this most recent research then and find out about the similarities that uh, these researchers have found between cancer and viruses. So the research is of Dr. Andre Glinka from the Division of Molecular uh, Embryology, is a German Cancer Research Center employee in Heidelberg, Germany. And it's uh, relevant to note that this um, German Cancer Research Center is the national and the largest cancer center of Germany. So Dr. Andre Glinka and colleagues published uh, during 2018, so quite recently in the journal Cell Discovery, a uh, um, paper that showed that uh, forced deacidification of cancer cells using drugs such as metformin can in turn induce inhibition of a key signaling pathway in cancer called the WNT slash beta catenine. Uh, also the depleted cellular energy, so the 2 ATP through glycolysis instead of the 36 ATP through phosphorylation uh, decreases the stemness and the viability of cancer cells. This research highlights the similarity between cancer and viral affected cells. There is such a large overlap between the two that often makes us think that uh, cancer cells look a lot like an infectious disease. And this research also provides a novel concept of a therapeutic strategy that is not only relevant to cancer but also to viral infections such as the coronavirus which currently represents a major health challenge of course. We also see that viruses and cancer have a lot in common through the so-called oncoviruses. Oncoviruses are viruses that actually cause cancer. You can see here, for example, in the table on the left, that the virus culprit and the cancer, it can produce, for example, the herpes virus can um, cause Kaposi sarcoma, the hepatitis B and C virus can cause liver cancer, uh, and Epstein-Barr uh, virus or EBV can cause lymphomas, etc., etc. So there is a very strong relationship between viruses and cancer and they have a lot in common. Let's find out what exactly and how we can treat therefore. So there is a striking similarity according to the research between cancer cells and virus infected cells in that both undergo a metabolic shift from oxidative phosphorylation to glycolysis, otherwise known as the Warburg effect. As a result of the Warburg effect, which lowers intracellular pH due to lactic acid accumulation, both cell types must invest heavily in exporting lactic acid to maintain the correct pHi, which is essential for maintaining an increased cell cycle rate. Uh, and for assembling, of course, new viruses in the virus-infected cells, respectively. Another common feature of both cell types is that they rely on fatty acid synthesis to enhance lipid production for proliferation in case of cancer or for envelope assembly in the case of the virus. Coronaviruses are assembled from RNA and viral proteins in the endoplasmic reticulum Golgi uh, intermediate compartment. And during their assembly, viral proteins are highly sensitive to changes in intracellular ions composition, a distinctive feature that can be targeted with selective ionophore drugs. 
for example, the uh, Calium Natrium H plus uh, ionophere monocene, which alters the correct balance of ions, can lead to defective modifications of essential coronavirus proteins, for example, the glycoproteins E1 and E2. And moreover, one of the most critical parameters for the assembly of different types of viruses is intracellular PHI. And it is possible that by lowering the PHI with specific drugs, one can effectively interfere with the virus amplification cycles. So what those scientists did is they developed a therapy. And the targets of the therapy go hand in hand with uh, our graph that we showed you at the beginning of how we get sick and that shows you that they are trying to address exactly the cascade of things that are happening within our bodies that we've discussed. So first target of the therapy is to decrease the PHI specifically in cancer cells or the virus infected cells with no effect on the normal cells using, for example, a mitochondrial complex I inhibitor such as metformin, or you can also use sanum uh, lactic acid therapy or alternative um, dichloroacetate, so DCA. Then secondly, they interfere with the lipid production, which is necessary for both cancer cells and viruses through the use of a lipid lowering drug such as phenofibrate. Uh, you can also alternatively use niacin or certain types of mushrooms. And uh, they use the potassium sodium hydrogen um, H plus ionophore such as monosin or you can also use volcanic rock dust and a combination they found out of all of these types of drugs um, causes strong uh, intracellular deacidification. And a strong antiviral action is also provided by the way by mushrooms uh, such as cordyceps and uh, coriolus which can modulate the immune system as well as the acidity oxidative stress of the cells. Another great modality of dealing with infections, so viruses such as the coronavirus or cancer, is galvanic therapy. More specifically, the amazing ionotrans devices that I'm going to link also in the description box below for you. Galvanic therapy is the best and the fastest way to start your healing process. It uh, reverses the pathways that uh, you went uh, down when you became sick. So the whole cascade that we've discussed of things that are happening within your body. And it all starts by uh, repolarizing your cells. And that is best achieved with galvanic therapy. That's why it's also already being successfully used for cancer therapy in private hospitals and clinics in Europe. So um, here, the galvanic therapy devices such as the ionotrans, and you can get it in the ionotrans essential uh, shape or in the more sophisticated professional version. I'm going to tell you about the differences immediately. So, but uh, both have in common that they use galvanic therapy, uh, the most modern type of galvanic therapy devices, and this reverses the damages at the cellular level. And once the cells start repolarizing themselves, the following happens within your body. First, the cellular membrane regains its permeability and the membrane potential goes back to the normal 70 to 90 millivolts. The nutrients can access the cells better and the metabolites can be excreted and expelled as they are supposed to. So that means that the cells do not starve and do not become toxic. Also, the immune cells can see better the sick cells and they do about, uh, they go about their defense work as they should. The cellular communication is reestablished. Acidic wastes are being eliminated. The hormones go back to normal and the cortisol levels decrease. And as a result, the energy flows better through your body. You feel that your life energy is coming back again and your fear and panic fade out. And if you are a healthcare giver or professional and you work in a clinic uh, or you need to act fast to save the coronavirus patients, uh, you can use the Iona Trans Expert, an all-round 
treatment tool, very affordable and extremely versatile. It's also a galvanic therapy. As I've mentioned, it has all the features of the most modern galvanic current appliances. It delivers the DC current that is free of any vibrations or modulating pulses. And the galvanic currents uh, have been specifically designed for fast and optimal healing results. Uh, this uh, professional model comes with different highly conductive electrodes which can be connected simultaneously to four different therapy channels. You can treat thereby different body zones at the same time or four patients at the same time. It is a standalone professional galvanic therapy device for daily use in your medical practice and it offers a multitude of galvanic procedures with unlimited health benefits. For example, you can treat uh, pain uh, ac to, to acute conditions from degenerative to autoimmune disorders to multiple chronic ailments. Galvanic therapy can efficiently help you empower your body's self-healing potential. It optimizes your metabolism. It improves the blood and lymph circulation, triggers and supports deep detoxification, supports also fast wound healing and tumor necrosis. All uh, around regeneration, it's anti-inflammatory, it's antibacterial. It's great for activating and balancing your uh, central nervous system and your autonomous nervous system for cells regeneration, for mobilizing the arterial plaque and uh, other blood vessel deposits, for stimulating the endocrine activity, for harmonizing and vitalizing the body, for opening up your key energy or chi energy channels for balancing the meridians, for stimulating the energy flow, for balancing and moving the body, uh, the electrolytes and the humors within the body, for activating nerve synapses and neuronal cell regeneration. It also supports scar-free uh, wound healing and improves the quality of the skin. So extremely versatile, non-invasive and proven around the world. Link in the description box below for you. If you have any questions, contact information also in the description box below. Please do not hesitate, contact us. We love to help you out and uh, discuss with you what is the best solution for you. With all that being said, please again like, share and subscribe if you enjoy this kind of content. Also hit the notifications button and until next time, stay healthy.